It's a great honor to be here. It's my first time in, not just in Sao Paulo, not just in Brazil. It's my first time in South America. <laughs> so, I, I don't know where to start. I hearing everybody talk. Mine is a very selfish little story of my own little struggle. I guess you all know Bollywood and Bollywood is this film industry where we make more films than Hollywood does. Where I, in India, there's almost no literature. There's a lot of cinema and we make more than thousand films a year. And the, we don't make documentaries, we don't make anything, we only make fiction, entertainment, love stories, songs and dance. And I was born in a very small town which had no cinema theater. And I never thought that I would want to be part of the films or cinema. I was studying to be a scientist, I was studying entomology, zoology. I studied with honors. And there was a time when I was 18, 19, I, I was not interested in anything because of the girl that I broke up with. She had left me. <laughs> and there was a film festival and I went and saw a lot of films. And I had never seen cinema like that. It opened up my eyes completely. And I, for the first time, realized cinema is not just love stories and songs and dance. It can be much more. And that's what I wanted to do. And my family was very unhappy about my choice. So I, I come from a family of engineers and mathematicians. So they said, Ki, what do you want to go and do cinema? Because, you know, it was an industry back 20 years ago controlled by film families. All, whether it was almost like few families controlled the whole industry and they decided what cinema is going to be. And I was an 18 year old, confused, a complete impressionable boy who one day was communist, next day would become a capitalist. You know, it depended on who was the one talking to me. So, and I just knew that I wanted to do something with cinema and I also wanted to be an actor, I also wanted to be a writer, I wanted to be everything. So like happens at the age of 18. And I left home, I went to Bombay and that was the time where we did not write scripts before making films. And I had these ideas and I was, I would read books that people in the film industry would not read. And I was influenced by people that were considered suicidal because they would not make enough money if you were influenced by them. You would make films that will not make enough money. To make my space at that young age in the industry was very difficult. And slowly what happened was that whole lot of idealism, when you go with that for one year, two years, you slowly realize that you need to survive, you need to eat food, you need to find a place to live. And slowly you give way to, I started doing television and I forgot why I wanted to make films. And then something happened to me out of the blue. My dad came looking for me to Mumbai. I had left home, I had run away from home, I had not seen my father. And he got worried and he came looking for me. And my father had this very strange philosophy in life. He never saved anything for his children. And in India, in Hindi, you say it, Poot saput to kadhan sanche, Poot kaput to kadhan sanche. It means that, why do you need to save money? If your son is a good son, he'll make his own. If he's not, he'll blow it all away. <laughs> so, and he was quite a stubborn man. And he said that you came here to do something. And now everybody at my small, the small town that I come from looks at me and say, laughs at me and smiles at me. So he was such a prodigal child and see what he's doing. 
he wants to make cinema and now you are doing television and you are embarrassing yourself and you are embarrassing me and so at least nothing at least try to do what you came here to do and i went on a journey and i got corrupted by a person there's a man i met and we made a film together called satya my first film as a writer at the age of 22 which became us the seminal film of last decade in india it was my first film as a writer it had everything about the film was wrong in the sense that it was about everything you're not supposed to do with cinema it had no stars it did, it had a kind of a remote love story but it was real it was shot not shot in studios or shot on actual locations locations which were slums locations it was almost like the say pishote of india or the, or say the city of god of india it was a film that was real with newcomers and the film that changed a lot of things and in the process of doing that film over 2 years where no one believed in it and the success of the film kind of corrupted me i suddenly i remembered all those things from which the determination with which i had gone to bombay and i don't know how much of what i say makes sense to you because in the context of indian cinema where everything is about superstars and box office and stars are really larger than life it's like a religion in india cinema there's a journey that started that i decided i we want to make films the two kind of films that existed one was the mainstream commercial film that just made a lot of money made you happy and the other kind of artistic cinema which was meant to go to the festivals and never released on screens and only came on television and i didn't feel that i fit in anywhere i didn't feel i could fit in anywhere and we had our own independent minds and we were young and we wanted to do things nobody wanted us to do and after a lot of manipulations and things i realized that okay i want to make a film and i wanted to make a statement i was young i was arrogant i wanted to make a statement i wanted to make a film without anybody without any superstars in my own way and we got we manipulated we got the money we made the film it was a film that everybody liked very much and i felt that i have made my statement and the government of india banned the film <laughs> so that was uh, the start of another another kind of a journey that that's when i realized i was naive and people allowed me to do things at that time because i felt because they didn't feel threatened by me it was unknowingly i was doing those things i just wanted to be in a position to keep doing things i didn't care whether i was getting any money or not i was getting any kind of a credit for it or not and people found it very easy to deal with me so they gave me a lot of space to do things and because of that this film that i made it got banned i got even more angry i was like you know i here's my statement and nobody is allowing me to you know show it on screens and my fight went on with the censor board that's when i was realizing that okay even though we live in a democracy we can't really say everything and it i almost felt abused by you know why can't i say what i feel I, it doesn't have to sometimes make sense i i don't really you know if so what if the cinema does not always have a social message this for, for if something doesn't have a social message they thought it should not be made in the indian constitution in the indian constitution cinema is defined as healthy entertainment and my film was banned on the grounds is neither healthy not and nor entertaining so that's what i was fighting against and then this film happened black friday black friday came my way nobody wanted to do it because in india we have never made film about real situation using real names we fictionalize everything and here was this film about a actual case which used names of people which were who were alive and i made this film and the nobody understood how can this be called cinema the question that was raised was what is it are you making a documentary or is it a film if it's not a documentary and if it is a film then why is it using real names and if it is a film why does does not have songs so you know it was it was difficult for me to explain those things the the court put a stay order in the movie and film got pirated the film did not release it got pirated it spread the world over and a lot of people saw the film 
And I started to do a third film that got stopped midway, a fourth film that, that got shelved two days before the shooting was supposed to begin. It was a seven year long traumatic period where I was trying to figure out where do I stand because every time I would take the film out of India, they would think I'm too, I have music and I, you know, I'm maybe more Bollywood and not more European or more universal. When I went back home, they said that I was too European, I was not too Bollywood. So, you know, it, it was a confused period, not knowing where I stood. And that was the time when, by chance, a, a judge, a Supreme Court judge, saw the film in Dubai on a pirated disc. And he was surprised, he said, which film is this? He said, this film, film from your country. And he said, why is it not releasing? The, he said, this film should come out. And he came back to India and he actually, the case was reopened and the film was passed and finally released in 2007. So I was seven years without a release, struggling. In that seven years was a period where I was confused. I almost, I became an alcoholic. I was, my, my marriage broke up. I didn't know how to deal with anything around me. And the film came out. And in spite of the film coming out, because by then everybody had seen it, it did not work at the box office. Everybody loved the film, but did not work at the box office because everybody had their own pirated DVDs. So then, about my years of confusion, I made another film. That film nobody understood because it just didn't fit into the way anybody thought about cinema. And there's a lot more we wanted to do. And I didn't see myself as somebody who wanted to make a certain kind of an art, art cinema, which only, for me, there was an independent thought. And I felt an independent thought from an independent mind. It, today it could be something, tomorrow it could be something else. It doesn't have to be bracketed into a one definition. And that was very difficult for us to explain. One good thing that happened by then was a lot of public funds and corporate studios came into the industry. It really became an industry and it was not family-run business. But they also hired people from within those family-run business. So the good side was we had multiplexes and studios. The bad side was still being run by the same people. And until, unless any of the things that I was doing not made money for them, they were not going to allow me to make films. And I got incredible reviews. People loved the films, but I was not being allowed to make films. And that's when Slumdog Millionaire happened. And Slumdog Millionaire, Danny Boyle came to India. He saw Black Friday. He was happy. He made Slumdog Millionaire. And he talked about Black Friday, how it inspired Slumdog. And he is a man who actually put me out there. I, can we have the footage from Black Friday, please? This was a film about the bomb blast that happened in Bombay. And there was this one chase sequence in Black Friday, which Danny Boyle's opening sequence of Slumdog paid tribute to and he talked about it. And how it hap always happens in India is because people from outside India gave credit to someone. Suddenly, within India, they allowed me to make films. Because credit was given to me by somebody from outside who won an Academy Award and people talked about it. And then, in spite of with that credit, with that allowance to us to make films, also came conditions. So on one side, we had all the money and all the support to make films, but they also were telling me what films to make. So that went on for some time, and that within that fight, what we did was we started borrowing money, we started going digital. I discovered the internet. I did not know anything about the internet. And I discovered the internet, and I, there was a discussion going on on the internet about what kind of film I'm doing and I started participating in that discussion and those people invited me to start blogging about it. And suddenly I found an outlet where I started 
just letting out everything. I started letting out everything, my angst against the system, about the industry, everyone. And that blog, which was called Passion for Cinema, it doesn't exist anymore, but all those, if you go search for it, you might find articles. That blog became a kind of a rage, and I suddenly realized I'm not alone. I just connected with a lot of Indian filmmakers, engineers, doctors, people not belonging to film families. And in within a year, that blog had become a movement. And I was writing every day. The industry on one side started, they could not stand me because I was saying things that so far were not being said. Nobody dared to say those things. Suddenly, the whole myth and awe of film stars was gone because there was an insider who was saying everything. as almost like the whistleblower from the industry. And with which a lot of people started connecting together, a lot of young people. They started coming over, working for free, and we started making films at the lowest cost films. And it became a kind of a thing where we start, our film started representing India in various festivals from Venice to Cannes, the only film that went to Cannes, or Venice, or Toronto, or everywhere, all made at extremely low cost with the support of a lot of people who started collecting together. We formed an office where we did not have enough money to pay anyone. Uh, but the, the youth, the young people refused to leave the office. So we made a kitchen. So anybody wanted to sleep, they could sleep in the office and get food. But we had no salary to pay anyone. And suddenly our workforce just went twice the size of any big studio in Bombay. And they would, and people who were working with us were being offered highest amount of salaries and they would not leave. And they would work for free in this office. We started making short films. And this, all this has happened in the last three years. We started making short films, which would go out, win awards. And the fundings that started coming our way, suddenly from outside, people telling us, do what you want to make. We started doing international co-productions. And our whole office is running. Even today, we have zero money in our bank account. We still make break-even films. We don't lose money. But we have three international co-productions, three films in production, two films that have already released this year, and two ready films, one which is directed by Michael Winterbottom, Trishna, which we are the co-producers. And it's all done in a way with a lot of faith from a lot of people with the kind of work we have been doing. We don't fit into mainstream, we don't fit into art house, but it's, it's in a very organic way. It's just been going on and on. And I don't know, it might snowball into something bigger, but till now, we're still a break-even structure. But we have the freedom to do whatever we want to do. And we are doing all kinds of films, and we are not being answerable to anyone. And at the time when TEDx invited me, also the Ibera and his team has have put together a bunch of my films, which they are showing here sometime. But it's, it's been a very intense journey. It's been 19 years, but suddenly, last three years, suddenly it feels like the earlier 16 years did not exist. And it's just that we don't have that kind of a time anymore, and we are constantly making films. We have a shoot that's starting in Sri Lanka on the 6th. We don't have money today. But the unit has left, and people have gone on their own, and the shooting is going to start. There's another shooting that starts on the 5th of October in Bombay and Pune. And money has just got approved. And while I was sitting here, I got a message. We are sitting and drinking. Where are you? We are missing you. <laughs> so that's how we are doing things. And in last three years, we have not just been breaking even at the box office. We've also been, our team has been winning awards all over the popular awards of the country. And it's been a great journey. Thank you so much.